the blood clots we are talking about, you know, that we are worried is the major vessels blood clots, such as over the leg. And those that affect the lung vessels, those can actually affect the blood circulation, affect how you breathe. So those are the important ones. Hello, sahabat semuanya. Welcome to Bincang Bincang. Hari ini saya bersama Dr. Lee Yushan, spesialis hematologi atau ahli darah dari Mount Elizabeth Novina Hospital Singapura. Banyak orang heboh dengan D-dimer. Setelah kena COVID, D-dimernya tinggi dan nggak turun-turun. Dan saya merasa tes darah di dimer ini banyak sekali dilakukan tanpa indikasi yang jelas. Apa yang harus dilakukan kalau di dimer Anda tinggi? Dan apakah kita perlu khawatir kalau ada sesuatu yang buruk akan terjadi? Kita akan tanyakan langsung pada ahlinya. Sebelumnya, perkenalkan saya Dr. Tony Setiobudi, spesialis bedah tulang di Mount Elizabeth Hospital, Singapura. Jangan lupa subscribe. dan aktifkan lonceng notifikasinya. Saya akan bagikan banyak informasi kesehatan yang berguna bagi Anda semuanya. Yushan, thank you for your time today. Thanks for inviting. No problem. What is D-dimer? Can you explain? I think uh, I agree with you yes. that uh, we have a lot of uh, consultation about high D-dimer. So what is high D-dimer? Maybe we can share with this uh, small diagram. about where the dimer come from. Okay, in our body, you know, we always have uh, this uh, small blood clots and and uh, for small, small bleeding and also from some small of this uh, um, vessels injury. So that's when you find blood clots, which is what we call fibrin, okay? And this fibrin, of course, our body have a way to actually break away these blood clots. And the one of this product from breaking away of this fibrin or blood clots is a, what we call a byproduct. This is called D-dimer. D-dimer. Now, D-dimer previously is used only if we suspect patients having a very bad infection, causing all this uh, low platelet and bleeding, or when we suspect patient having these uh, blood clots in the legs or in the chest when patient presented with chest pain, difficulty in breathing. Now comes the era of this uh, COVID infection where everybody is very worried, right? Because some of these uh, um, patients with the down with COVID and all those, especially those in admitted in ICU, they have a higher risk of getting a blood clots in the lung, leading to a higher risk of a chance of patient uh, died from this uh, uh, known complication. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are a lot of uh, study now um, understand to understand you know why we have this uh, uh, clots in covid yeah. patients a yeah. lot of this get, had to do with the inflammation in the vessels okay. but i think we have to know that the uh, d dimer is not only present in patient having a clot it okay. is a not spe- not a very specific markers mm-hmm. okay for example this d dimer can be high even in patient having a pregnancy Yeah, delivery, you know, of this the uh, a child or a baby can have a high D dimer. Okay. Patient having an infection also can have high D dimer. This can be ranging from a bacterial infection, viral infection, everything. In pregnancy and infection, D dimer mm-hmm. is raised. Is it related to blood clot? It is related because you know any other um, blood f- forms of this uh, infection, right? You can small small blood clots we call microvascular from this. Okay. So this is actually a way that the uh the immune system works. Uh. Like okay. for pregnancy, in the other way, they have the small clots to prevent the 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 pregnant lady from excessive bleed. So it's known to have uh, this kind of uh, uh high D dimer. Okay. In uh so because I'm a hematologist, sometimes we do see patient having a uh, cancer. And it is also known to be increased in patient having a cancer. Okay. Right. So in and conclusion, this is not a very specific markers. Yeah. But all are okay. related to blood clot. Yeah. yeah. So what the blood clots we are talking about, you know, that we are worried is the big, the ma- uh, major vessels blood clots, such as over the leg, right? You can mm-hmm. see a blood clot there, big. And those that affect the lung vessels, those can actually affect the blood circulation, affect how you breathe. So those are the important ones. 
small blood clots like you know micro and micro trauma these are the one you can't even diagnose yeah right those are the one that clinically will not affect your lung function when the dimer is high and the patient is healthy do we need to chase this number down so in this era of covid and vaccination uh, we do see a lot of patient having raised dimer if the patient is well you know without any leg swelling right no chest pain no difficulty in breathing right there's no need for you to chase this number down you know only thing if you suspect a patient having some other symptoms for example leg swelling yes you look for whether patient have a blood clots all those things or patient having loss of weight then you have to think of whether patient having a cancer yeah. or patient having injury you think of all this injury not like everything the dimer high you go to a blood clots a few things that we need to rule out when the dimer is high blood clot in the legs blood clot mm. in the lungs injury cancer infection is yes. there anything else that we need to rule out something serious that we need to rule out when the dimer is high well there actually a long list you know but more importantly you know getting a good clinical history and then you have to go and see your doctors not not all the high dimer is related to clots. We have to see in the whole context, whole perspective. Yeah. Something yeah. like, you know, uh, we have sedentary lifestyle, smoking, obesity, sometimes also can lead to higher blood clots. Some liver injury also can have a higher liver, higher uh, D-dimer. Okay. Yeah. I think previously we never checked routinely. Now with the COVID era, everybody check. Definitely Until everybody. that level that, I don't know what's the meaning of D-dimer anymore. Yeah. If we have ruled out those serious things, and the mm. dimer is still high, do we need to be worried? So, okay, let's say your patient have a high D dimer. If you rule out there's no blood clots in the lung, the blood clots in the leg, I think we do not have to, and patient is well, no symptom to suggest mm. any cancer. I think you can just monitor. Don't have to chase and, you know, do things that uh, to reduce the number. I know it's very common practice that some patient without any infection, without any other symptoms, have a high D dimer because the routine blood check now, so called yeah. routine. Yeah. Right. And they will be put on the medication to prevent them from getting a clot. I think this is a little bit yeah. over exaggerated kind of response. Yeah. I have been a few patients like that, and the management is actually I just monitor and sometimes I even take off the uh, blood thinner and they yeah. did well, they are they are they, yeah. there's no they never come back to me and say, hey, I have the blood clots now. Yeah. So we don't have to be too exaggerated in our response and giving yeah, this I, blood thinner. I have some patients very well after COVID, but recover very well. The dimer is mm -hmm. high and the patient was given blood thinning medicine. Mm -hmm. I feel that this is over-treated, mm -hmm. but I'm not the expert. That's why I ask you to explain. So yeah. if the patient is well, the dimer is high, we have ruled out all the serious things. We don't need to treat high the dimer, correct? Yes, in summary. Okay. So those patients having a, a COVID infection, I mean, some of them, if they are admitted in serious ICU, the, the doctor, physician there in the hospital, we assess whether the patient needs some preventive dose. Preventive dose, huh? not treatment dose. Yeah, mm. when we talk about treatment for the clot, we have the, the range from preventive dose to the treatment dose. So those having a, in ICU, yeah, sometimes they will benefit from preventive dose of blood thinner. After they are discharged, you know, like one month later, we are well, I think we can take this out. And uh, there have been study trying to look at, you know, whether patient will benefit from higher dose of blood thinner after discharge or no. No, there's no indication. Some after discharge, you can stop if patient is ambulating well, eating well, hydrating well. Okay. But of course, you have to assess uh, personally. Uh. Okay. So in summary, um, if the D dimer is high, we need to rule out a few things like blood clot in the leg, blood clot in the lungs, infection, cancer, injury, and so on. If we have ruled out all these serious things and the D dimer is high, we don't need to treat the D dimer even with blood thinning medication. Thank you so much, Yushan, for sharing valuable information to us. We are learning a lot of things from you. Saya juga berterima kasih kepada semua pemirsa yang setia bersama dengan kami di setiap waktu. Silakan tulis komen dan pertanyaan di bawah ini dan jangan lupa subscribe, like dan share video ini dan sampai jumpa di bincang-bincang berikutnya. Bye bye.